Good afternoon and welcome to Midday on this 24th day of January. That's the book she wrote by myself. Lauren Bacall with us in person in just a few moments. It's a remarkable book. You know, someone just said to me, one of our staff members just said to me, I've seen a lot of books written by movie stars, but this is the only one I really want to get. Yes, it's the only one that's really held me captivated, truly. You know, reading the book is great. And we're going to talk to Lauren Bacall about the book and, of course, many other things. But first, let's welcome Steve Johnson with the news. Good afternoon, everyone. There is some bad news today for consumers. They there she is, Lauren Bacall. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what a shock. Actress, author. <laughs> The author of one of the most fascinating books you're likely to read this season, and I, not ghost-written either. No, the author by me in person. Lots da, 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 of hours da, da, da. there. Long and lots of years, over three years. Yes, many, many hours. That requires a special a kind day. of discipline, doesn't it? That perhaps you learned in the theater yes. too. But right, you're right. Similar kind of discipline. Yes, of having. That's why it was. It worked out so well. My going down to Knopf to do it because it was like going to the theater every day. You know, I. I had to go there to do my work, and I was put in a little closet there, or sometimes <laughs> oh, nice. a large closet, yes, <laughs> in different offices, and um, given my yellow legal pad and my pens, which they threatened to take out of my royalties. <laughs> <laughs> if you wasted them. You know, it does interest me, though, that you would write uh, an autobiography, because I know you kind of believe in what Bogart always said, that an actor doesn't owe the audience anything but a good performance. Well, you must not feel that same way about your personal life because you're really sharing it with us. Well, I don't, I didn't write it uh, to share it particularly. I wrote it really to find out something about myself. Oh. Uh, and, I mean, the fact that it is shared now, of course, is, I mean, that's the way it is. It's okay. But I, I, I wrote it, I started it about three and a half years ago. And in this process of kind of self-discovery, I just kind of gathering my life together and trying to figure out where I was, where I've been, where I may be going, I don't know. And it, so it was a very um, important thing for me to do at that time. It was some, something I never planned to do, mm. something I didn't think I ever would do, really. To the millions of people who think of Lauren Bacall as the other half of Humphrey Bogart, they're going to find out that this isn't true, that she is a very special individual all by herself. That, that you, has been so. kind, of a, kind of a problem, hasn't it? Yes. Oh, yes, it definitely has. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a part of my life that I, I mean, I cherish, that I love, but I have had uh, many more years alone than I had with Bogey, and I... Um, I understand everyone's interest in him, and deservedly so. God knows. I mean, he'll live forever. I know that. And I'm very grateful to have been a part of that, and that he gave me, grateful to him for the life that he gave me. But I also feel that I have earned something on my own, and I, I want to just, uh, I want to make sure that my position in the theater is my own, which I think it is. And I also, I mean, I think I finally earned it with applause. <clears throat> and I have a whole life to lead, and I want it's my own life. It has nothing to do with him, and it hasn't for 22 years. It has a, just everything to do with me, and... It's remarkable to me that after your marriage to Jason Robarts that you have become such fantastic friends. Was Is that it? a real learning experience for no, you? No, <laughs> but it's not remarkable. It wouldn't, I mean, if you, it, I don't know if you know Jason or not. No, but, I don't know him personally. But, but, <laughs> but he's, a, he's a very special, wonderful man, and he's a very open, loving, very easy human being. And he gives everyone a lot of space in life. He's not, he's not a confining man at all. And uh, we just were married to each other at the wrong time. We, but we have a marvelous child, marvelous son that we both adore and who adores both of us. And Jason and I just love each other. I mean, it just, it just proves that we were right to be together. Even, even though it was the wrong time, yeah. we cared about each other. I mean, so, so the fact that we are great friends now just shows you that uh, the rewards do come even if they come late. Tell us a bit about those children. What, what are their longings? What would they like to do with their lives? Well, uh, Sam Robards uh, is going to be an actor. Uh -huh. He's the only one of my children that's going to be an actor. And that, he's, he's known about that since he could talk. So, I mean, <laughs> I suppose that's, there's, you know, he's one of those people like I was, and I suppose like Jason was. It, that's what he's going to do. That's the way it is, and nothing will change it. Now 17? Now 17, yes. <clears throat> and, um, 
Stephen Bogart, my oldest son, is graduating from college from uh, Hartford, majoring in the media and communications. Wants to raise the level of television programming. Yeah. And yes, children, he's full of ideas. And so he is married and has an eight-year-old son. And he's terrific. He's going to be off and running as soon as he, he graduates. It took him longer than my other children to figure out what he wanted to do. And Leslie, my only girl, is a nurse. And she's uh, terrific. She's, she's got a lot of things that she wants to do with her life besides nursing, in addition to nursing. Do so, you have time to see them all? So, I have time to see them all. I don't see them all together very oh. often, which a week before Thanksgiving, we all gathered at Steve's house because Sam goes to school about in con Connecticut, and uh, it's about a half an hour from Steve's house, and Leslie drove down from Boston. So we all were together, and it was wonderful. I mean, I love to see them all together because they all are crazy about each other, and they love to be together, and they, for you know, you forget about it. They're all so busy with their own lives, as they should be, but I, I mean, I don't see enough of them, but I talk to them all the time. But Sam, of course, lives at home still. We're going to take just a quick break here, and we're going to be back. We have lots more time today. Lauren Bacall is our whole program, so we'll Ooh. be back in just a few <laughs> moments. Don't go away. Oh, the whole program. Are you ready? A bread with fewer calories than yogurt? Two slices of fresh horizons have fewer calories than a cup of plain yogurt or gelatin. A bread with as much fiber as brand cereal? Two slices of Fresh Horizons have as much crude fiber as two bowls of brand cereal or all this celery. Fewer calories than yogurt. As much crude fiber as brand cereal. Fresh Horizons, wheat and white. We add fiber and take out calories. Take it from me. A family that jogs together gets very dirty together. And we don't come home smelling like a bed of roses. What detergent do I use? Arm & Hammer detergent. Arm & Hammer has the muscle to get out even ground-in dirt. But it does more. It deodorizes. So my wash smells as clean as it looks. New Arm & Hammer laundry detergent cleans and deodorizes. Bill Eitman has arterial sclerosis. He was told three months ago he needed bypass surgery to live. He decided not to take his doctor's advice and instead to begin a program of diet and exercise and in effect cure himself. Bill is risking his life on his belief that this program will work. Join us on Health Beat tonight when we accompany Bill through the Pritikin program. The book, once again, Lauren Bacall, by myself, meaning, of course, that she really did this whole effort by herself. You just said that you are a detail freak. Yes. And that is so true. When you read the book, you have a memory like I can't believe you remember everything from the color of dresses to all sorts of I intricate know. details. My, my uh, editor kept saying, I wish you'd forget something. Can't you please forget something? <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, that, uh, that tendency to, uh, for details and busyness and efficiency uh, caused you to have some problems when you first went to California, didn't it? Because of the, the relaxed atmosphere there. Oh, it drove me wild. I mean, anyone that has been brought up in the East, you know, in New York, you know, you're always rushing. I don't know, to get nowhere a lot of the time, but you're always rushing. And you always feel that you're going someplace. I always felt that I had a destination. But when I first arrived in California, Nobody seemed to have a destination. I mean, it was wandering, and it was, I thought, oh, my God, they, to, take, to walk one block seemed to take hours. I thought, I don't, I'll never make it here. I don't know how I'll last. It comes too, it's a little too laid back. Yours was really a Cinderella story. You yeah, went there as a very young girl, had great success, fell in love with a big star, all those. The first, movie. The, the first couple of chapters make a movie by themselves. Yes. They really do. <laughs> well... Yes, I lived it, I guess, in a way. It's, um, yes, I was very, very lucky, certainly. And, uh, and, and yet, by the same token, when things happen to you that early, uh, what do you do for, uh, for an encore, you yes. know? I mean, the rest, of, the rest of your life is downhill. Uh, yes, well. I had a chance, by the way, to see it in London while I was studying there, and the audience went crazy for you. It was really an exciting oh, evening in my it. life. 
Yeah? Oh, I'm so glad because I really love playing London. You see, in London, London is much less pressurized as a city. The theater there is less pressure, pressurized. You play your eight shows a week, but then as the life is so kind of much, much softer, yeah. um, I found that it was less exhausting to play eight shows a week there than in New York where everything's very frantic, you know. You talk in your book so frequently. I know that watching our program are a great many lonely people. Many of them saying, gee, wouldn't it be wonderful to be in that surrounding, be in show business where they, yeah, you have so, so many friends and so many people around you. Yeah. And yet you talk so much about loneliness as a phenomenon of that business as well. And it points up the fact, I guess, that loneliness is really a state of mind rather than a state of physical being. Betty Davis really made that clear to you when we first meeting with her, too. Well, I think that, lo you know, I, I mean, everyone is lonely at times. You're lonely. Even, even living with someone, you can be very lonely. I just think that we are alone. I mean, we are always, there are certain thoughts that we never share with anyone. There are, there are experiences that are very much our own. And, um, I mean, that's just a part of life. You just have to just accept it as a part of life. But being, uh, being alone, I mean, there are many things, if, if you are interested in enough uh, and aware enough of what's going on around you, you don't have to be lonely. That's true. Your mother was a spectacular oh, yes. woman very lucky have you are you she familiar was. with a book called my mother myself i haven't read it i know about it yes i think you find it that? very interesting yes. because you have a you, in the book i get the feeling that you had a terrific relationship with i her. did i was very dependent on her of course i was an only child and she focused all of her energies on me and thought that i was perfect well. she was wrong <laughs> wrong but I mean, she knew really I wasn't, but she, she just thought that I could do no wrong. Of course, there isn't anyone that is, in no one's eyes, uh, are we ever as we are in the eyes of our mothers. Our mothers are from the your, most special people. From your family and your mother in, in those early days in Hollywood, 19, 20 years old, you got lots of warnings. Uh, yes, it was interesting, wasn't it? You're too young to make decisions like that. But they beware, were very beware. aware, my uncles, yes, were very, very aware of, of life, and they felt that happiness and fulfillment was, personal fulfillment was the most important thing. And they knew that everything was happening very quickly to me, and so. How effectively can people give advice to young people in, in a position similar to yours? Is there any way you can help them to understand some of the things you had to find out just by going through the hard knocks? Well, I don't think so, really, because you, as you know, I mean, if you try to tell your children anything, they've got to find out for themselves. Mm -hmm. Everyone is different. So everyone has to experience what they experience themselves. And I say, yes, I know it was that way with you, but you're different from me. And I mean, it, and those days were different or whatever. So that you can't, I don't think there's any rule for anyone. Um, I think you just have to be open to experience and to change and just hope that you make the right decisions. That's all. I mean, there are no guarantees in this world. You are on a schedule right now that is back breaking. Have you I, noticed? Oh. I just, <laughs> My back I is can. broken. Yes. <laughs> back is broken. So what do you do when it's time to relax? Well, I don't know. As I'm not going to relax for six months. I don't know. I, I mean, I have the next six months of my life totally planned, uh, mostly as a result of the book. Um, and then I'm going to make a film. So I just, uh, when I relax, I hope I will go to my little house in the country that I've only had for a year and look at the trees and the birds. And <laughs> there was one sentence that used to concern you a lot. That sentence was, gee, you don't look Jewish. It was, it reflected, Terrible. it reflected yeah. a whole state of our society and concerns on your part and so forth. preconception, yes. That, you that experienced a lot of this, uh, people discriminating against you because of your... <clears throat> well, you see, of course, it was my, my interpretation and I don't know whether I was absolutely right about all of it or not. I think I was right about some of it. But uh, people's overreaction, because they have some set idea of what everyone is supposed to look like, is very disturbing. And it's very difficult if you are a dreamer and if you want all of the things that I wanted. It was very hard for me to deal with that because I suddenly felt that I was set apart for the wrong reasons. And I didn't understand it, and I couldn't deal with it. And I was, anyway, insecure. I mean, you know, with uh, I was always insecure. And and growing up with one parent, of course, you. Are you, you now? Know, you know? 
Do you still tremble and hold your chin down and keep your eyes? <laughs> oh, I tremble. I tremble. I don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm not quite as bad. I mean, hopefully. The, the look, <laughs> folks, started because she was trembling and held her head down. Yes. But then it turned into the look and things and changed. And I've been trying to that. copy it, but it doesn't work for me yeah. very well. For all of those of you who say, gee, I wish I could meet people like that, as Cindy and Bill do, well, you can. As a matter of fact, Lauren Bacall is going from here to B. Dalton in downtown Minneapolis. She'll be there from 12.30 to 1.30, and then at Dayton Southdale from 3 to 4 this afternoon. And then she's going to stop and have coffee, and then she's going to catch a flight. <laughs> Busy day. Yes, yeah, so then I'm going to... <laughs> By Myself, the name of the book, and it would be a fine investment and an even better gift. Thank you very much for being Lovely with us. Lovely having you with us. Oh, we'll be back you. in just a moment, it. Uncle You be the buyer or the seller. What's the difference? Well, if you're the buyer, I'll help you get the house that's just right for you. And if I'm the seller, I'll show up your house, take care of all these papers, and help close the sale. I won't have to do hardly anything. That's a whole idea. Oh! Congratulations. Century 21. We know how to close a sale for you. Each office independently owned. Disking in Treflan. Now, what about broadleaves? Add Amaben herbicide. Amaben Treflan beats both broadleaves and grasses. Broadcasting lasso. Now, what about broadleaves? Add Amaben herbicide. Amaben lasso beats both broadleaves and grasses. With Treflan or lasso, Amaben won't brown beans. there, ma'am. <laughs> so you're looking for a frozen pizza? Yes. You want one that's homemade, don't you? Of course. One that makes its own Italian sausage and pepperoni, don't you? Absolutely. One with plenty of fresh mozzarella cheese. Oh, yes. Then you want a tombstone pizza. <laughs> Why do they always act like that when I say tombstone? Everybody likes tombstone pizza, right, horse? Let's see now. We want to talk uh, next Monday. Midday is going to originate from the Queen's Review Luncheon, you know, the St. Paul right. Winter Carnival, Garden Plaza of the Radisson St. Paul. And the reason I'm looking at this note is that you can uh, get ticket information by calling 227-6534. You're invited to come to the Garden Plaza. Uh, and uh, no tickets are required the, day, uh, the next two days at uh, Landmark Center, which will be next week as well. Incidentally, we are going to be at Landmark Center tomorrow, tomorrow for D-Day. Tomorrow, D-Day. If you are considering to give up smoking, tomorrow's the day to do it, and we're going to be talking about it and originating our show from the Landmark Center in St. Paul. Big D-Day rally tomorrow. Yes. So we hope you'll be with us then. Tomorrow on Midday, stick around now as the world turns is next here on Channel.